We present The Dwarves, based on Chapter 13 of Chrome Yellow by Aldous Huxley. Dramatized for radio by Peter Mackey, with David Lerner as Hercules and Claire Falconbridge as Philomena. The Dwarves. drink me under the table, I'll make him eat his words <laughs> or drink them. <laughs> that would be something to see. Especially when you know the gentleman in question finds it necessary to take the waters at least three times a year. <laughs> what do you want? Begging your pardon, Sir Henry. Well? I, I was told out to... Out with it! It's a boy, sir. Oh. <laughs> I knew it! I just knew it! Good! Excellent. You can go. Yes, sir. A boy. I have a son. Congratulations, Henry. <laughs> oh, I tell you, Charles, he'll be another Marlborough by the time I finish with him. Let me fill your glass. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> a son. I have a son. I propose a toast to a new life. <sighs> May he emulate all those things that have made you what you are today, Henry. And some that I haven't what. <laughs> We'd better get this down in the book straight away. Oh? Oh, they're all here. Births, marriages, deaths, all in the good book. Oh, closest I'll ever get to my maker. <laughs> Aunts, cousins, born, lived, died. Seems pointless to me. I know I'm here. Now... To Sir Henry Lapith and Lady Sarah, a son. The infant, who was destined to become the fourth baronet of the name of Lapith, was born in the year 1740. In honour of his maternal grandfather, Sir Hercules Ockham of Bishop's Ockham, he was christened Hercules. He was a very small baby, weighing not more than three pounds at birth, but from the first he was sturdy and healthy. He walked at ten months, and before his second year was out, he'd learned to speak a number of words. But at three years, he weighed only twenty-four pounds. And at six, though he could read and write perfectly and showed a remarkable aptitude for music, he was no larger and heavier than a well-grown child of two. Henry, please, for my sake. I have already told you there are estate matters to deal with. But he's with. been looking forward so much to going to the theatre with you. Then he'll just have to be disappointed. Well, I doubt I'll be missed. You're wrong, Henry. He's always asking about you and why you never take him out. Really? And what do you tell him? I, I have to make excuses. Then perhaps it's time you told him the truth. Henry, please. Which is, I do not wish to be seen in public with him. But he is your son. I have work to do. Are you so ashamed of him? Ashamed? It is more than shame I feel. You gave birth to a monster. And that monster is an offence to me. Not only will I not accompany you to the theatre this afternoon, I will not be engaged with estate papers either. I intend to get drunk, madam. Very drunk. Good day to you. On his twelfth birthday... Hercules was still only three feet and two inches in height. His head, which was very handsome and nobly shaped, was too big for his body. Otherwise, he was exquisitely proportioned, and for his size, of great strength and agility. His parents, in the hope of making him grow, consulted all the most eminent physicians of the time. One ordered a very plentiful meat diet, another exercise, a third constructed a little rack, modelled on those employed by the Holy Inquisition. Perfect, Mr. Jenkins. A most excellent piece of work. Thank you, Sir Henry. Although it does seem a little on the small side. It allows for a growth of six inches. I expect a downside more than six inches. Uh, these straps are for the limbs, you say? Quite, Sir Henry. Mm. The child should be placed so, with the feet at the same. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Well, I see no reason why we shouldn't start straight away. The sooner we start, the sooner we see the results. What? Uh, come here, boy. Uh, not frightened, are you? No, sir. Good. No need to be frightened of something that's going to make a man of you, is there? 
No, sir. Now, Mr. Jenkins, if you'd care to show me how this thing works. Of course, sir, oh, Henry. Right. Up you get, then, young man. I'll call up. That's it. Feet down this end. Good. Oh. I'm just going to put these straps around your ankles. Oh, perhaps you would do the same at the wrist, oh. Sir Henry. Very well. How does that feel? Not so bad, is it? No, sir. Good. Now, Sir Henry, this is the winding mechanism. I'll just take up the tension. All right? I think so, sir. Good. I think on this first occasion, Sir Henry, we should leave it there until your son gets used to being in this position. Then gradually we can start to increase. Start now. But, Sir Henry, I feel it would be better. I'll do it. Sir Henry. Look, get I... out of the way. And we'll start as we mean to go on, eh, boy? Oh, we both want results, don't we? Sir Henry! I cannot allow you to proceed like this. Cannot, sir? I thank you to keep a civil tongue in your head. We know what we're doing, don't we, boy? Don't we? In the course of the next three years, Hercules gained perhaps two inches. After that, his growth stopped completely, and he remained for the rest of his life a dwarf of three feet four inches. His father now avoided all company, being, as he said, ashamed of having brought an abortion into the world. He took to solitary drinking, and the year before Hercules came of age was taken off by an apoplexy. His mother, whose love for her child had increased with the growth of his father's unkindness, did not long survive, and a little more than a year after her husband's death, succumbed to an attack of typhoid fever. Hercules thus found himself at the age of 21, alone in the world and master of a considerable fortune, including the mansion and estate of Crome. Almost immediately he started to make changes. These included replacing his father's servants with men of his own stature, the horses with Shetland ponies, the mastiffs with pugs, and the furniture with items of a more appropriate size. I expect they can see the flames from the village, sir. They must be wondering what we're doing. They can wonder as much as they like, as long as they don't come and see for themselves. No, wait. I I want to throw that piece of furniture on the fire myself. It's a bit heavy, sir. It's something I have to do. When I was a child, this rack was the biggest thing in my life. Now... It doesn't seem quite so big anymore. This means a lot to you, doesn't it, sir? Yes. I mean, everything you're doing here at Chrome. Yes, Simon. It does mean a great deal. May I say something, sir? Of course. Well, sir, it's just that... All the servants... We've been happy here since the summer, and that's something none of us have known much about before. I wanted you to know that, sir. For the next few years, Hercules concentrated on remodelling the estate of Chrome into a private world for himself and his kind. It became a haven, even a fortress, into which the outside world was never welcomed. Yet all the while... Hercules yearned for a companion with whom he could share the paradise he'd created. And when the yearning became unbearable, he forced himself to leave the sanctuary of Chrome and search for a partner of suitable stature. Often he returned humiliated, always bitterly disappointed. For Hercules had a susceptible heart, and one that was easily bruised. But he never gave up hoping, and when his search failed to produce a suitable match, he was forced to look further afield. Again, he suffered many disappointments, but it was still with a certain degree of optimism that he opened the reply to his latest inquiry. Al nobilissimo gentil uomo inglese, Sir Hercules Lapith, poggiamo i nostri ossecchi a grandoce che la signora vostra goda di ottima salute. I'm sure you would find the most perfect partnership. Although you will no doubt feel you will have to make allowances for a proud father, Philomena is an exceptional young lady. Her lack of height has never been a bar to the development of her abundant talents in language, music, and the arts. She has a most beautiful singing voice, exceptionally so in one so small. 
I have no doubt you will find her a most agreeable companion, and would urge you to come to Venice without delay. I cannot stress this highly enough, as I perceive in this possible union a happiness I have sought for my daughter for several years now. Although she has many suitors, I feel she would be most happy with her own kind. I would appreciate your soonest reply, and anticipate your visit to my country with pleasure. I remain, Sir Hercules, your most obedient servant. Count Titi Marlow? Ah, Sir Hercules Lapis. I am honoured to make your acquaintance. And I am happy to, to find... If you would prefer to converse in Italian, oh. I have a reasonable fluency in your language. Excellent. Oh, you are welcome to my house, Sir Hercules. Uh, please come in. Uh, thank you. I trust your journey was not too tiresome. On the contrary... I find travel most stimulating. Good. Unfortunately, for the time being, my wife is occupied. <laughs> but she is most anxious to meet you. I have been looking forward to meeting the Countess. All in good time. But perhaps you are even more anxious to meet the person you have travelled all this way to see. If your daughter is prepared to see me now, I would be honoured. If you would be so kind as to follow me, Sir Hercules... You must forgive the disorder in my apartments. It is so difficult to get servants here in Venice. I am sure you understand. Of course. Oh, please be careful. There is very little light. Here we are. I had better knock. You know what ladies are like. Come in. Papa. Oh. Sir Hercules, may I present my daughter, Philomena? I am honoured to meet you. And uh, I am no less honoured. I had better leave you two young people to get acquainted. I am sure you have much to talk about. There are some matters I would like to discuss with you. Sir Hercules. My dear Count, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I shall be in my study, should you require me. Uh, of course. You, yes. Well, till later. I hope your journey was a pleasant one. Thank you. I spent much of the time making sure of my Italian. I now find that was not necessary. Have you been to England? No. Where did you learn to speak our language so well? Our family have not always been in these circumstances. In the past, there was money for tutors. You were an able student. I also read a great deal, both English and Italian. What else would you like to know? I would like to know... Now I feel awkward. I'm sorry I had no intention of... It's not your fault. The whole situation is bizarre. You know why I'm here? Yes. Sir Hercules Lapith is looking for a wife. Suitable applicants will be interviewed as soon as possible. F forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. The sort of partnership I am looking for is not a commercial transaction. And I have no desire to be a mere business arrangement. Can we not start again? How so? By pretending we have just met. We introduce ourselves, and soon we are chatting like old friends. Well? I should like that. Then, I am Hercules Lapith. And I am Philomena Titamallo. I am pleased to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> I am a stranger in your city, Philomena. Will you not show it to me? Gladly, sir. You are most kind. And most fair. I must tell Papa that we are going out. Friends have often told me of the beauty of Venice. Now I am actually here with the city all round me. They were not exaggerating. It is good for me to see it through the eyes of a stranger. When something is so familiar. 
Yes, it is beautiful. It is so different here. In what way? The people. They look at us, yes, but somehow it is with a sort of tolerant indifference. Mm, they're used to seeing me. But the two of us together... Mm, they're still curious. I feel comfortable here. I'm glad. But I don't understand why, on our first meeting, we are allowed to walk out alone. In England, there would certainly be a maiden aunt in front and at least two aged spinsters a few paces behind. That is easily explained. I have no aunt, and there is not enough money for a chaperone. Then I would have expected your father to accompany us, at least on this occasion. He has been forced to swallow his pride. Is that the right expression? Yes, possibly. I don't really understand. My father is ashamed that he does not have enough money for me to stay on here as part of the family. He will be even more ashamed that he has made your decision more difficult. Please, explain. If you do not take me for a bride, there is no alternative but for me to go to the circus. They have made their offer and return for me at the end of the month. I know nothing of this. You play your part well, Sir Hercules. You must believe me, your father did I know not... he would only do that for my own good, but I want you to understand. Please, you must I listen. would rather keep company with the clowns and the acrobats... Stop this, you don't have know. you offer me your hand in marriage out of pity? Surely you can't Can believe... you understand that, can you? Philomena, no. Please, please wait. How do you feel now? I am sorry. You must think I am very silly. I think... I want you to understand that if... when I ask you to be my wife, it will be for your own sake and for mine. Do you understand that? Yes. Did you tell the gondolier to come here? Not especially. Well, you see the palazzo over there. Where the woman is looking out of the window? No, 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 the next one, with the steps coming down to the water. Uh, oh, yes. I was born there. It was wonderful for a child, so many rooms. Oh, we had our own barge. I used to love going on the canal. My nurse would hold me so tightly, and all I wanted to do was trail my hand in the water. I probably couldn't even reach the water, even now. <laughs> At Crome, there is a lake with a boat that is just the right size for you to trail your hand in the water. Oh. Are you fond of music? Oh, yes, very much. It has been my friend for many years. Before we left the palazzo, Papa gave me a harpsichord. It was difficult to play. My hands are so small. Since then, I like to sing... But that is difficult without accompaniment. You are a musician? I try. It is very beautiful here. Especially at this time of day. It is as if the water and the light were lovers trying to attract each other. And just when they do, they, they turn away again. I can see both the water and the light reflected in your face. That too is beautiful. Oh. No, don't turn away. Have I offended you? Oh, no. It is just that uh, I am not used. Anything be more perfect. Here will we sit and let the sounds of music creep in our ears. Soft, Soft stillness, stillness and, and the night, night become the touches of sweet harmony. Oh, you are so... It is all so perfect. I really must return home now. Papa will be anxious. And tomorrow? If tomorrow is as perfect as today, then it cannot come too soon. Philomena, 
Are you sure? Can you doubt it? But it has only been three days. I was not aware that a certain number of days were required before you were allowed to feel like this. I just want you to be sure. When you are like us, love is something you only dream about. You long for it to happen with all your heart, but you know it will never happen. Yes, normal people may feel that too. They may even despair. But not with that dreadful certainty that it can never happen. It is a miracle. But you are here. I have no doubts. You are going to miss Venice. I was born here. And I am about to take you far away. I will be with you. I never dared to believe, to hope. Philomena, you will love Chrome. I hope Chrome will love me. How could it do anything else? Philomena, I can wait no longer. I will speak to your father this morning. But Hercules, I think perhaps it may be too soon. You think I should wait till this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> His formal offer of marriage was accepted. And after an unostentatious ceremony at which the English ambassador acted as one of the witnesses, Sir Hercules and his bride returned by sea to England, where they settled down, as it proved, to a life of uneventful happiness. When we do, we will rename the piece Sonata for Four Small Hands. I'm sure Signor Scarlatti would approve. Now, can you guess what's under this cloth? Another surprise, Hercules. <laughs> My life has been nothing but surprises for the past six months. No, I cannot guess. All right. Voila! <gasps> a fiddle. Not just a fiddle, a Cremona fiddle. Oh, it is very fine. <laughs> but I have never learned to play the fiddle. Besides, it is far too big. But you are not going to play it, my love. I am. It will be the perfect accompaniment to those arias you love to sing. Yes, but even though your arms are longer than mine, I doubt it. I can... have no intention of tucking it under my chin. I sit in the chair and place the fiddle. So, and what do we have? A bass viol. Oh, Hercules, <laughs> how wonderful! Oh, it is perfect. Quickly now, get your music. Oh, yes, yes. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Simon? Gregory has just come up from the lodge, sir. Oh? He thinks that... My lady, it's Rose. It's her time. I will come straight away. My dear, don't you think... We could send for Mistress Hurst from the village. I can manage. But she is experienced in this sort of thing, and should there no. be... No! We will do this ourselves. Of course, I will come with you. Oh, Hercules, she is so beautiful, so exquisite. I held her in my arms, just like a doll, and she took hold of my finger and held it so tightly. <laughs> and her hands and feet, all so beautiful, and so much hair. But so small. <laughs> of course, she would be small, but so tiny. You know, I remember my youngest brother when he was born. And I remember thinking how wonderful that anything so small could survive. Oh, but Rose's child. 
Of course, I was so busy during the birth, I had no time to think of anything but what I was doing. But afterwards, I was almost afraid to touch her. And then I gave her to Rose and... Oh, Hercules, I have never seen a woman looking so happy. It was so beautiful and... And no... And? And I don't know what else to say. Oh, but you were doing so well. Oh, don't be silly. No, really, I have very rarely heard you speak so eloquently and at such length on any subject. Oh, Hercules. However, there is just one fact you appear to have overlooked. Completely incidental, of course, perhaps not even worth mentioning. And what might that be? Uh, it is of no consequence. Now you are teasing. Uh, no, no. Can they tell me? Well, the moment is gone. It would sound trivial. Please tell me. Oh, very well. But it really is Hercules. so... Hercules! I just thought perhaps it might just be time to be thinking of having a child of our own. Hercules, could we? Could we really? Anything that would make you happy, my love. Oh, I just... And before you said it would make me happy too, it would make me very happy. I doubt if I could be happier than I have been with you. But when you see the child, Hercules, you will know exactly what I mean. One of our own kind. Not a mistake, not, not something to be cursed. One of our very own. And so beautiful! <laughs> you will go and see Rose, won't you? <laughs> Oh, no, no, Gregory. When I advance, unless you see a way past my guard, you must retreat. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Let's try again. On guard. Just as you say, sir. Oh, my poor Gregory. You sound as if you're having to do your duty. I'm just not very good at fencing. Oh, but getting better all the time. Just remember what I've taught you. Don't get flustered. And that you have to show some aggression. Very well, sir. On guard. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes, Simon? My lady sends her compliments and says that while she's quite happy to sit in the carriage while you kill off your enemies... Oh, oh no! You should not expect the ponies to be so patient. I completely forgot. Gregory, we'll have to stop there. Same time tomorrow. Whatever you say, sir. It's not an order. Very good, sir. I'd better go before I get into any more trouble. Are you sure you're warm enough, my love? Oh, yes. It can be so deceptive at this time of year, even though the sun is shining. I promise if I get cold, I will tell you. Can we stop here? There's something wrong. Oh, no, no, nothing at all. Whoa, whoa there. I just love it so much here by the lake. Yes. Just to look out over the water. Do you ever miss Venice? How could I? Everything I love is here. Hercules, I, I am sure I must have asked you this before, but what was the name of your ancestor, the one who built the house? Ferdinando. Ah, yes. Ferdinando. Well, why do you ask? Oh, no special reason. I knew it was a nice name, and now you've told me again. Yes, I still think it is a nice name. Do you think it is a nice name, my love? Well, I, I never really thought about it. Yes, I suppose so. Well, I think it is a very nice name. Hmm. A good name. A good name for a boy. Do you mean... No. <laughs> yes. Are you really... Yes, really. I can't believe... Oh, when... <laughs> When what? How long? Well, how long have I known? Or when is the child due? Both! <laughs> Either! Neither! I... I... <laughs> ah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and so, after four years, Philomena found herself with child. Sir Hercules was overjoyed and wrote in his daybook, If God is good, the name of Lapith will be preserved and our rarer and more delicate race transmitted through the generations until, in the fullness of time, 
the world shall recognize the superiority of those beings whom it now uses to make mock of. The child was christened Ferdinando. He has your nose. My nose is nothing like that. Especially the way it turns up at the end. If I thought my nose was anything <laughs> like that... Achilles, don't be so cruel. He certainly has your eyes. Yes. Dark and passionate. Then if he grows up to be as handsome as his father, the ladies had better beware. You think so? I know so. <laughs> no, my love. How are you feeling today? Better. I had a good sleep and I feel much stronger. Good. I might even try to get up a little uh, bit later. Not yet. <sighs> but it's been nearly a week. And that means at least another week in your bed. <sighs> Rose got up within four days. Rose is... Rose. Besides, she didn't have as much trouble as you. That was no trouble. He just kept us waiting a little longer. Didn't you, Ferdinando? Yes, you were no trouble, were you? He was bigger than Rose's child. Because he is a boy. And he's going to be as big and strong and handsome as his father. But you're still staying in bed. We will see. You mustn't resent my wanting to make a fuss of you. You know how much I care. Of course, my dear. And now there are two of us to fuss over. Just as I will be fussing over the two of you. I will teach him to fence and ride. And I will teach him Italian and music. And together we will teach him to honour his parents. And we will love him so much. Oh, but we will be firm. He will make us so happy. You have both made me so happy already. Then we have nothing to fear for the future. Nothing at all, my love. A little Ferdinando will be the most loved child. Sir Hercules, may I have a word, sir? What is it, Simon? I just wanted to say, sir, that the other, other servants and I... Master Ferdinando's birthday, sir. Yes? We, we have a gift for him, sir, from all of us. Well, Simon, how very kind. We thought perhaps you could bring him to see us this afternoon. Well, of course, and thank you. Have you seen my wife? I think she's still in the drawing room, sir. Hercules, I thought you were out riding. I decided against it. But, my love, you always... Is there something wrong? You are not well? I am perfectly well. Then why so serious? Where is Ferdinando? He's having his sleep. So soon? It is not yet midday. Surely you have not forgotten what day it is. No. Well, he was up early, and, and since then he's been getting far too excited. Hercules, there is something wrong. Please, tell me, what has happened? Nothing has happened. We need to talk. I have never seen you like this. Please. Well? We have to talk about our son. Yes? Ferdinando is now three years old. Well, of course he is. And today is his birthday. Now, if you have nothing else to say... No. Please, sit down again. Philomena, Ferdinando, he... He is not as we are. What do you mean? I mean that Ferdinando is three years old and... and he is almost as tall as you, his mother. It is something I think we have both known for some time. Something we have never dared admit before. Ferdinando is not of our race. He is a man. No! No, you have no right to speak like this. Don't run away. I will not stay and listen to this... These things you are saying... They have to be said. But he... No, there is nothing wrong with Ferdinando. We have to face the truth. No! No, you are wrong. Do you hear me? You are wrong. Can 
you not sleep either? No. Hold me, Hercules. Hold me very tightly. I... I love him no less. He is still my child. I know. What are we going to do? There is nothing we can do. He is our son. To send him away from Crone because he is different to us would... would make a mockery of everything we believe in. I love him as well. Yes. I think when he is old enough, it will be better for all of us if he goes away to school. He will need to be with his own for some other time. I'm so sorry. For what? The way I behaved this morning. I have known for a long time. I was just not prepared to admit it. What will happen to us now? Who can tell? But I fear things will never be the same at Chrome again. Put my box on the carriage and be quick about it. Don't think I can quite manage that, Master Ferdinando. Lend a hand here, William. Stay where you are, William. It is his place to drive my carriage. It is your place to put my box on the carriage. Very good, sir. What is happening here? I am leaving for school, Father. That does not answer my question. Put that box down, Simon. Well? I told him to put the box on the carriage. What gave you that right? He's a servant, isn't he? How dare you? Never let me hear you speak like that again. Do you understand me? But it's too heavy for me to lift by myself. Then how in God's name do you expect Simon to do it? Oh, Ferdinando, Ferdinando. Yes? I suggest that you ask Simon and then you lift the box on the carriage between you. Do you hear me? I heard you. Simon, would you be so kind? I'll do it myself. Get out of my way. Oh, for God's sake, I... I never thought I would have contemplated striking my own son. Father, I... Put that box on the carriage. But I... Now! Get in the carriage. I just wanted to say... Now! Drive on, William. Simon, forgive me. Let me help you up. I'm all right, sir. Are you hurt? It's my arms. Is it broken? I'm, I'm not sure, sir. Come into the house. A glass of spirits for both of us, and then we send for the surgeon. There's no need to... I'll be the judge of that. Simon. Sir? I hardly know what to say. I am so sorry. Should my lady ask what happened, sir, perhaps it would be best if I told her I slipped on the steps here. <laughs> you're not home from school more than a few hours and already you're asking for an increase in your allowance for next term. Well, yes. <laughs> you speak your mind. I'll say that for you. Then you agree, Father. I agree to think about it. First, you must tell me what progress you're making in your studies. Quite well, sir, except in mathematics. <laughs> that was hardly my strong subject either. Be, hai fatto progressi in italiano? I... I'm afraid I, I don't... I was asking if your Italian had improved. But there was obviously no need for a translation. You really might have tried harder, Ferdinando. Your mother would be so proud of you. It's my new dog. A mastiff? Here? His name's Carl. Where did it come from? I bought him from a fellow in Windsor. How could you ever think of bringing an animal that size back to Chrome? If he sees your mother's dog, Sam... <laughs> he might eat him. Why bring him here? I couldn't very well leave him at school, could I? 
Get that beast away from here. He's just a bit playful. I want him tied up in the stables. But he was only... Immediately. I'll do it later. I will not tolerate this insolence. And what are you going to do about it? You deserve a thrashing. Do I now? Who's man enough round here to give it to me? Why, you... Hercules, what has happened? Stay where you are. Don't let Sam... Oh, my God. Stay on the steps, oh. Philomena. Get down, Carl! Oh, no! Carl! Uh. No! No! Oh. 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 Don't touch her. I, is it all right? Hercules, put away your sword. Father. Get out of our sight. Find your dog and take it away from Chrome. But I... Go. Just go. Take my hand. Oh, Hercules, I'm, I feel the jaws so close. You're safe now. Oh, oh. Now, what is all this about? Nearly noon on a most beautiful day, and here you are, still in bed with the curtains drawn. There, my love. See how glorious it is outside. I have not been asleep. All the more reason why you should get out of that bed and come riding with me. Later, perhaps. You must try. I will. If you would just make the effort. For my sake. There is still no word from Ferdinando. He will write when he needs more money. You are very hard on him. Perhaps. I suppose had I been sent on the grand tour, I might well have spent as much. He must be in Italy now. And coming home soon. He will have changed so much. Two years. He will still be a man. Perhaps it will be different. He was only a boy when he left. Hercules. Yes, my love. The light is hurting my eyes. Please draw the curtains again. As you wish. Thank you, my dear. Anyone about? I'm home. Hello? Ferdinando. Hello, Father. Welcome home, my son. I hope I see you well, sir. You do? You... You have grown. It's been a long time. Where is my mother? She is asleep just now. She's unwell? No, no, just a little tired. We didn't know when to expect you. She'll come down later. Now, come along with me. I want to hear all about your travels. Master Ferdinando. Welcome home, sir. It's good to see you, Simon. See how he's grown, Simon. Indeed, sir. We'll be in the drawing room, Simon. If my wife... I've not come alone, father. Oh? Two fellows I knew at school... Quite extraordinary. I met them at Calais. And as they were travelling on to Chester, I asked them to stay at Crome for a few days. Where are they now? In the carriage. Of course, if you don't want them to stay... Uh, that can... would be unthinkable. You have offered them the hospitality of this house. Please, invite them in. Yes, I will. Simon? Sir? You will have to open up some of the old bedrooms for our guests. Yes, sir. And we will eat in the Great Hall tonight. It will be extra work for you all, for which I apologise. Send down to the lodge for Gregory. We will need to bring out the big old table and the large chairs. Very good, Sir Hercules. Tell Ferdinando... Tell him I have gone to be with his mother. <laughs> it was quite wicked of you to bring a dog of that size onto this step, no, definitely. Well, one tends to forget. Anyway, the whole point of the story is that my father here stopped Carl with just one thrust. 
And when you consider he was fully grown, well, Carl, I mean, <laughs> that was no easy task. You might say a Herculean effort. <laughs> Sir Hercules, I hope you're not offended. Not at all. <laughs> um, it uh, must have been a frightening experience, especially for you, Lady Philomena. Yes. Must have left you a bit shaky. I have never forgotten it. Simon, you're not doing your duty. We're out of wine at this end of the table. Sir? It's all right, Simon. Serve them. Mother, I nearly forgot. Your father sends his regards. You went to Venice? What's wrong with that? Nothing at all. It's a beautiful city. Sebastian and I got very drunk in Venice, didn't we, Sebastian? Um, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as I was in Venice, I thought I might as well go and see my grandfather. How is he? Very well indeed. Delighted to see me. He must have often wondered what his grandson would grow into. If he would grow, even. <laughs> would you... Excuse me. You're not leaving us, Lady Philomene. Are you all right, my dear? I'm tired. I'll come with you. No, we must look after our guests. I am sorry, I am unable to do that any longer. I understand. I will come up shortly. <laughs> the, the rabbit is excellent, Sir Hercules. <laughs> I should say. They come from the estate. Really? I thought it would be too large for that. The estate, I mean... <laughs> Simon, more vegetables for our guests. <laughs> I swear that dish is nearly as big as he is. You'll never get it on the table. <laughs> then, then we'll just have to give him a helping hand, won't we? <laughs> come on, little man. Up you come. Oh, <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, well done, Sebastian. Well, put the dish down. Then I can't hold it like this forever. <laughs> oh, Geoffrey, a glass of wine for Simon. No. <laughs> Why am I not? Poor little fellow. Looks as if he could do with a drink. You are guests in my house, gentlemen. I would ask you to treat my servants with respect. Really, father, it's only a joke. In extremely bad taste. Nonsense. Besides, it would give him something to tell the others. Being invited to take a glass of wine with the young master at table. Or would you prefer I went down to his level? <laughs> <laughs> think you would feel if you were only three feet high? I would feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> music. That's what we want. We want some music. Quite so. Yeah. Father, how about a tune on your fiddle? I think not. Oh, come now. We need entertainment. It must be a very small fiddle. No, 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 it's a real fiddle. A Cremona fiddle. Isn't it, Father? Father? Why aren't you talking to us anymore? If it's a real fiddle, how the devil does he play it? Yeah. Tell them how you play it, Father. Very well. What he does yeah. is to put it between his knees <laughs> and play it like a bass file. <laughs> I'm leaving now, Simon. I think you had better go too. I feel I should stay, sir. You don't have to. I have to look after your guests, sir. Thank you. Good night. Good night, sir. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps they will stop soon. Oh, come to bed, Hercules. I've ordered a bath. I doubt if I would sleep anyway. I I'd better go and see what's happening. Your presence will only make it worse. Look, I would be happier if you would stay with me. I know. It's just that... I'll be back soon.
a story so merry about the abbot of Canterbury. Oh, <laughs> about the abbot of Canterbury. Uh, go on then. Abbot of Canterbury. No, 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 no! Give him some more brandy. Come on, old boy, get this inside you there. Yes. <laughs> Simon, Simon, you're going to dance for us. Happy oh, yes, 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 yes. Up, 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 They are making mock of Simon now. Tomorrow it will be our turn. I do not want to see tomorrow. It is better not. I have prepared your sleeping draught, my love. It is much stronger than usual. Yes. Thank you. We have often talked about this moment. Would the dip were not now here? Drink, Philomena. Lie back now. You'll be asleep soon. It is strange. I remember all the happy things. The music we shared. Our trips on the lake, Chrome. It seems such a short time ago. And yet so long. So very long. Is there nothing we can do, Hercules? Does it have to end like this? It is the only way. We are committed. What will happen to Chrome? Ferdinando will be master here. There will be changes. Yes. Will he change everything? He will give Chrome back to the world of men. And Rose? And Gregory and Simon? What will become of them? They will not be wanted here. Well, where will they go? That must be for them to decide. But there must be something we can... No. Not now. We have made our decision. There is no longer a place for us here. After Ferdinando was born, I often wondered if I had been wrong in living apart. For tolerance can can only come from understanding. But we are each of us responsible for what we do with our lives. Ferdinando is angry and frightened. I feel so sorry for him. It is up to each of them. Simon, Rose, Gregory, their children, and Ferdinando to create their own happiness, just as we created ours. I have been so happy with you, Hercules. And I with you. I will sleep now. Sleep well, my love. Adio, amore mio. Arrivederci. Sir Hercules kissed her hand as though he were afraid of waking her. In his bathroom, he tested the water with one foot, and finding that it was not too hot, he threw off his dressing gown and, taking a razor in his hand, sat down in the bath. The blood oozed out, floating through the water in dissolving wreaths and spirals. 
In a little while, the whole bath was tinged with pink. The colour deepened. There was not much blood in his small body. In The Dwarves by Aldous Huxley, Hercules was played by David Lerner and Philomena by Claire Falconbridge. The narrator was Garrard Green. Sir Henry and Count Titimalo, Ronald Herdman, Lady Sarah, Hedley Nicklo, Ferdinando, Eric Stovell, Ferdinando and Hercules as a boy, Silas Gregory, Charles and Geoffrey, Tony Turner, Jenkins, Alan Devereux, Simon, Rob Swinton, Gregory, Alex Jones, and John Dixon was Sebastian. Harpsichord, played by Marlene Fleet, and violin by William Hand. The Dwarves, which was based on Chapter 13 of Chrome Yellow by Aldous Huxley, was dramatised for radio by Peter Mackey and was directed in Birmingham by Philip Martin. <laughs>